Hello there everyone, it is Carol here from the Crafty Emporium. Hope you're all keeping really well. Um, today I thought I'd pop by to just show you a little technique that I use sometimes. Um, now I know that not everybody enjoys making coffee dyed papers. They find it quite laborious to do. Um, same with tea dyed papers. Uh, but when I do do my coffee dyed papers, I just thought I'd show you how I actually store them. So once they come out the oven and I've got a pile of them, I put them in this plastic wallet and it just helps that when I close it, it sort of suctions them flat. And whilst I don't end up with perfectly flat papers as if I'd ironed them, it, they still do end up relatively flat. So I just thought I'd pass that little tip on to you. But I want to get on to what we're actually going to create today. And it's these papers here. And these are basically created using wallpaper and some coffee and it just helps to break up the blankness of a page so i've got some white ones here and i've got some already pre-coffee dyed papers that i've used this technique on too so it creates two kinds of different effects and as i say it's a nice idea especially for those who don't like creating and standing making coffee dyed papers just is a slightly different alternative so what i actually do is i use my silicone mat to just protect my work surface and then i've got I'll reach over for it a piece of coffee dyed anaglypta that's what we call it here in the uk uh wallpaper so it it looked like that and this is what it looks like after you've used it several times. So I lay the wallpaper down flat on top of my silicone mat. Now I've got a cup here of some coffee. And I used a dessert, heaped dessert spoonful of coffee. And as you can see, I've not even filled, well I hope you can see. Yeah, I've not even filled it halfway up on this cup. Um, because I don't want a lot of liquid putting on here. So whilst the coffee, when we paint it on, will seep into the depressed areas, we basically want the coffee sitting on top of the raised areas. And so what I would do is dip my brush in, and I've got a really wide brush, and I take the excess of liquid off. I need to leave some on. I don't want this bone dry, but I don't want it you know running in liquid and so i just paint it then over the top making sure so i've got a puddle up here i don't want a puddle i want it sitting on top so your brush needs to be relatively dry it doesn't want to be swimming with liquid liquid if i could speak properly and i want it sitting on top of that pattern rather than sinking into the depressed part of the pattern and it's quite therapeutic painting <laughs> so I just make sure that I've got the area covered and I've got a rough idea as you can tell from the space that I keep dying um, roughly how big my paper is so roughly how big the area is that I need to cover and then I can just see any small areas that maybe just need a little bit of excess liquid on. I then take my piece of paper place it on top and if you've got a pooling of liquid underneath then you end up with a splotch on top rather than just printing off the pattern and I just carefully run my hand over. Now I have tried it where I've used my uh, roller, so where I've used this and rolled it over but it ends up moving the paper too much and so that's why I prefer to just use my hands to rub over the top and as I say very gently because I don't want the paper sinking into that depressed pattern. And as you can see, it's starting to show through. And so when I lift it up, 
you can get to see the pattern and because there's hardly any liquid on there this will actually dry quite quickly the most time consuming part is painting the liquid on top so again and obviously the more you do the less liquid you will actually need to paint on top each time because it will still retain some of the liquid from the previous print now I've got a couple of different anaglypta wallpapers um, and one's quite floral and I've done it with that too so it works really well and then I just dry this off put it in front of my fan dry it off and uh, it's ready to use again for the next time so I've used this now this is about my fifth or sixth set of printing off this coffee dyed pattern and the wallpaper is still holding up really well and I try and do a few at a time so I try and do sort of 10 to 20 sheets of this so that I've got a nice selection of papers to use so there you go I'll do one more and I'll do it on a coffee pre coffee dyed piece of paper so again I'm just taking the excess liquid off my brush and just painting it very carefully over the top because as I say the last thing I want is a, a puddle of coffee <clears throat> excuse me and I try and paint both horizontally and vertically to try and get all of that top pattern covered in coffee so my piece of coffee dyed paper I'm going to sit on top and I just think that the coffee on top of the coffee looks really nice but as I say you do need quite a strong cup of coffee making a weak one doesn't work as well so quite a bit of coffee and not very much water to dilute it and I'm sorry if the camera's shaking it will do with the me rubbing my hands all over this paper so make sure I've got it all imprinted again as you can see it just makes a really nice pattern on the actual paper itself so it's just a great way of showing how you can still decorate your paper with coffee but without spending all that laborious time let's bring these back over without spending all that laborious time standing at the oven and dip in all your papers and it just gives you a really pretty effect if you're going to do this on the back of patterned paper so let's just say that this side of the paper was plain but this side was printed you just need to be careful that it's thick enough to take the liquid imprint because sometimes as you saw as i was running my hand over it the liquid seeps through to the other side so i don't know whether you can see that so it's actually made the pattern on both sides but obviously one is a lot weaker than the other <coughs> excuse me so if you're doing it on a patterned paper you need to remember that part of this pattern will seep through to the other side <coughs> so i've just spent what 20 minutes working on these just before i started filming with getting the coffee ready and sorting my papers out so i've done one two three four five six seven eight nine so i've got nine sheets there um so now i probably didn't even spend 20 minutes um probably about 10 minutes to do all of these but it's just nice it's something that you can easily do whilst you're watching tv and it creates a nice set of papers anyway that's my little project for you that i wanted to share with you today thanks very much for watching i'll see you all again very soon bye for now